this is Ada Boulay, and I hope you're having a marvelous day. Thank you for your support. Thank you for subscribing to the channel. Thank you for your thumbs up, for your comments, and thank you for sharing the videos. Thank you for all you do to support the channel. And yes, we are commanded to love one another, whether we want to or not, or whether we agree with each other or not. So the notorious Clarence Thomas is back in the news for doing something anti-black as we have come to know him to do. Someone asked me to speak on the fact that he has hired a known racist who says she hates black people to be his law clerk. I had heard about it, but nothing that black people like Clarence Thomas do surprises me. Clarence Thomas went to Yale Law School on affirmative action, and he has actively voted against any and every piece of legislation that would support affirmative action. He's married to a white conservative woman who supports every conservative anti-black organization that she can. So white supremacy has decided that since they have to live among and with black people, what they're going to do is pluck the most self-hating anti-black flunkies available, put them in high office, and require them to uphold white supremacy. That is what I call the convenient Negro, and Clarence Thomas is better at it than anybody. Clarence Thomas is a convenient Negro, and we've known that since he was put on the Supreme Court. I'm old enough to remember when he went through the confirmation hearings for the Supreme Court. He was accused by a black lawyer named Anita Hill of sexually harassing her on the job, and it was graphic. She had to spill it all before the Senate, a bunch of old white men and a few white women, and that's the way they like to do it when black people are aspiring to a high office. They like to grill them, lay open their personal lives, and try to bring them back down to the slave level where the slave master could do anything to them, sexual or otherwise. So now that they can't do that, they like to get you in front of the public, in front of a camera. CNN has been nothing but a bunch of voyeurs into the personal life of Fonnie Willis. So they love to do a public humiliation of a black person, male or female. So Clarence Thomas went through that too. And in spite of the fact that it was established Anita Hill would not back down, that he had sexually harassed her, he was put on the Supreme Court. But for a reason, to be the convenient Negro that he is being now. So the price that he pays is being their convenient Negro, which means that he operates in the interest of white supremacy and white people. So why would he elevate a young white woman who has stated that she hates all black people? Why would he elevate her to the status of being a law clerk for a Supreme Court justice? That is a hollow position. Law clerks go on to be Supreme Court judges or presidents of the United States or some other high official in American government. Why would he elevate her to that position? He probably didn't have a choice. He is a convenient Negro. So this woman's name has been on the tongue, especially of political liberals. And this came from the New Yorker. The scandal of Clarence Thomas's new clerk. Crystal Clanton became notorious for sending outlandishly racist texts. Now she's been hired to work for the justice, and a dubious new story has surfaced to clear her name. Well, you know, they're just telling a lie. She did it. They've already screenshotted it. People got to say. So they know she sent these texts. I'm going to read a little bit of this article from the New Yorker just to give you an idea of what the white people are saying about this. Last week, Supreme Court Justice Clarence Thomas shocked the legal community 
when the news broke that one of his new law clerks would be Krista Clinton, who became notorious in 2015 for apparently sending texts that said, I hate black people. Like, F them all. I hate blacks. End of story. For most young lawyers, sending such a text would indeed have been the end of story. Instead, Clinton is on the cusp of clinching one of the most coveted prizes in the American legal system. In the past several years, as Clinton has risen through the ranks of conservative legal circles, the story of her alleged racist outburst has been curiously transformed into a tale of victimhood. And we're not surprised by that. The new narrative is that Clinton was somehow framed by an unnamed enemy who, for motives that remain unclear, fabricated the racist text to defame her. So we're accustomed to that. A racist gets caught doing something racist, and then all of a sudden, they're the victim. That's gaslighting. And so we're not surprised by that, and we're not surprised by them trying to clear a white woman by telling a lie. This new account has been greeted with suspicion by many. If the revised story is a lie, then it threatens to implicate not just Justice Thomas, who has endorsed it, but several lower court federal judges and the leader of a major political group aligned with former President Donald Trump. Indeed, the whole affair may prove one of the most common occurrences of political reporting that the cover-up is worse than the crime. When the vile texts were sent, Clinton was the second-in-command and field director of the hard-right youth group Turning Point USA. The organization, a nonprofit advocacy group closely aligned with Donald Trump's presidential aspirations in 2024 is well known for poisonous rhetoric. Its leader, Charlie Kirk, has recently denigrated Martin Luther King Jr. as awful and questioned whether black pilots are capable of flying planes and argued that televised public executions, perhaps by guillotine, should be held in America with young people watching. This is a sick person. Yet even within Turning Point, colleagues were so shocked by the bluntness of Clinton's alleged text that they preserved screenshots of the messages which were shared in 2017 with the New Yorker. At the time, multiple Turning Point employees told me that Clinton was the author of the messages. See? Her own colleagues threw her straight up under that bus. They didn't do that because they were shocked. They did that because they didn't like her. Because she's probably a right person. Because your friends and colleagues are going to take your right-wing message and text and give it to a left-wing magazine and basically swear on a Bible that you're the one that wrote them? <laughs> With friends like that, you need no enemies. It's very instructive to see how white people operate. Now, this was white versus white, and they went and told on their white colleague. So let's move on. In 2017, Clinton told me, and this is Jane Meredith, the author of this article. Clinton told me via email that she didn't recall sending the text and that they seemed out of character. But when she was asked directly if she denied sending them, she declined to answer. The screenshots of the messages bore her cell phone number. Another former Turning Point employee who was the recipient of the text said at the time that he preferred not to discuss them. Several other Turning Point colleagues had also seen and circulated the screenshots. So these people were sending the screenshot of the message all over the office and there was more evidence. In addition to the racist comments, the screenshots show Clanton asking, can I come to Starbucks in five? She showed up at one on cue a few minutes later. In 2018, the online platform Mediate revealed another offensive statement by Clanton sent on Snapchat. The post featured the photograph of a man who appeared to be Arab 
accompanied by a caption that she wrote saying, he's just thinking about ways to do another 9-11. So this woman is really screwy. Now, now this is where it gets interesting because Clarence Thomas's wife is always into something. After the texting scandal, Jenny Thomas, who is Clarence Thomas's wife, and she's also politically active. Let's remember that she was involved in that January 6th insurrection. Anyway, they're saying she unofficially adopted Clinton as the couple's protege. So Clarence Thomas and Jenny Thomas took in this grown racist and became her mentors. The Thomases harbor deep anger at the mainstream media stemming in part from the justices' embattled 1991 confirmation hearing and evidently saw in Clanton a fellow victim. All of this is just more evidence that Clarence Thomas has no conscience and no sensitivity to how these conservative people view, treat, and talk about black people. He seems to have no interest and trying to elevate other blacks through his own position. Now, let me just tell you what I think was going on with this 2017 text before I end this video. Candace Owens was working at Turning Point USA in 2017. Candace Owens is as provocative as anybody. She is outspoken, and I don't know how she got in so deep with the conservatives, but she's in deep enough that they want to keep her in the fold. It's more important to keep Candace Owens than it would be to keep this random white woman. So I think that's what it is. I think Candace Owens probably pissed her off. And rather than just handle it with Candace Owens like a woman, she decided, like they always do, to drag all black people into it. I hate all black people. So that's just the nature of a racist. But anyway... This is what's going on with Clarence Thomas. He is a convenient Negro. He feels no responsibility towards black people. 400 years of captivity means nothing to him. He's being a convenient Negro. He's doing whatever they want him to do. Clarence Thomas was married to a black woman before he married this white woman. And he has a son. And that son is married to a black woman with some black children. Our only hope for redemption for Clarence Thomas is that his black grandchildren will be the beneficiaries of all that money that he has stashed back from doing all this tricky, you know, unsavory things that he's done on the Supreme Court. That's the only hope of redemption that he has, as far as I'm concerned. Okay, y'all, thank you for listening. Let me know what you think about the video. Subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up, leave a comment, share the video, and as always, have a great day.